Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a goal. Oh, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Today's RTGA podcast is going to remember to hit record. How are you doing, everybody? And welcome Good. along to the RTGA podcast. I'm joined by Rory O'Neill, Tomas O'Shea, and Kieran Whelan, who are patiently waiting for me to hit record on Zoom, which I've done this time. So this is going to be a well-rehearsed intro. How are we all doing, lads? Good, Mikey. Good, Mikey. Good, Mikey. Good bye. Yep, yep. Just check it, check it. Still hit record. I have. Okay. I oh, know. We're recording. <laughs> So today we are picking the midfielders on the All-Star team of the Sunday game era. Um, the football team is proving to be far, far less controversial than the hurling team. So let's just, let's just have a quick look at it here to uh, refresh our memories. Um, so can we all see that, gentlemen? For those listening on radio, we have Stephen Cluxton in goal. We have Mark O'Shea, Seamus Moynihan and Paddy O'Shea in the full back line. In case there aren't enough O'Shea's, we've got Tomas O'Shea at wing back, Lee <laughs> Keegan at centre back and Jack McCaffrey is making up a very, very attack-minded defence. Uh, in our first go at this, uh, nobody's ever going to hear because Mikey forgot to hit record. There were a few complaints. Uh, Tomas wanted to take himself out and put James McCarthy in, which is an incredibly selfless act. Well, I would, I suppose, Mikey, with Lee Keegan not being a natural centre-back, I'd have McCarthy in there as well. Uh, I'd have McCarthy would be possibly my first half-back, half-back in there. Um, if you were doing your own team, to be interesting enough, we should put up our own teams at the end or something. Oh, yeah. yeah that's um, a good shout. Yeah. More things for people to give not... out is a good thing. Give out about is a good thing, Tomas. Give them more to give out about. Well, they're all giving out about you at the moment, Mikey. So exactly. You just get it. Tomas, is there any chance you can get a couple more carry lads in there now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what about a couple of more girls? Take lads, you know, I think there isn't enough girls to lads in there. I was telling the lads there, you could pick an all-time girl tech team, right? And probably, I'm telling you now, they're so black back here and they take it really, really personal. The, the three shades might, might not make that back line, the girl tech. So but we've made the Sunday game back line, so that's all right. <laughs> that's yeah. enough. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. I think I think James James McCarthy's definitely the biggest loser, but it's very very hard to yeah. think who, who who you'd leave out. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody's complained about if Seamus Moynihan wasn't at full back, would you have to have him at centre centre half back ahead of James McCarthy? There's a question for you, Wheeler. Oh, but you see, James McCarthy, you know, was 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 a marauding kind of wing back, and he's played midfield as well, like 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 Tomas. Like Seamus Seamus went full back. What year, Tomas? When he really belges out. You see, Shemo was uh, Shemo went full back in two thousand. Uh, yeah, and he was footballer of the year inside. We don't. He had an unbelievable like he was just, year back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably the best full back I see. In, he was just at the top of his game that year. But I mean, uh, like I think his most natural position was number five. Yet I was there for most of the career when Shemo was there. So he never got an actual. He was put centre back. He was put left half back. He was put corner back. He was put midfield at times. He was put uh, full back. He played one football of the year. I'd have Shemo. Definitely on the team uh, at right half back. I think he was. But you just, you just said he never played right half back because you're always playing right half back. They all see, exactly, yeah, but they all <laughs> said that was his best position. But I suppose he had problems because, look, I, I was better than Shamo, obviously. But um, <laughs> <laughs> look, for the selectors, I was a better number five. Don't worry, I, I couldn't go in full back. Jeez, I, I, th- I think full back is fair enough. I think full back is fair enough for him because full back is a poxy position to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and realistically, the, 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 the typical full back, you know, it's not there anymore. There isn't a full back. You're inside Protective. there, you're a man marker. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not the old yeah. style, isn't it? Uh, you, could, you couldn't put a pair of superstars like you in at full back anyway, like me, men like this. Can we see this now? Mm, no. You still can't see it? It doesn't want to share this image. No, it's probably, it's probably configured in some way that. The, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the Thanks two boys, are, the two boys are very lucky. I'm going to post it on Twitter <laughs> later. <laughs> Magnificent. Even worse. Anyway, yeah. I shall give you the top ten midfielders top 10. As, as voted okay. for by the public, and the vote isn't finished. You'll get a couple of days now after um, ruminating on the um, learned sage advice of Kieran Whelan and Tomas O'Shea to keep voting. So here we go, the top ten. And I'm afraid, Kieran Whelan, it is in descending order. At number 10, we have Kieran Whelan. 
Geez, I'm surprised I'm even in the top 10. I'll take that. <laughs> Number nine, John McDermott. Right, Willie Joe Padden. Number seven, Aidan O'Shea. Number six, Dermot Early, Kildare and Roscommon. Number five, Sean Kavanagh. Number four, Anthony Tohu. Number three, and threatening not to make the Gale Talk or Sunday game team of the Sunday game era is Dara O'Shea. At four, we have Brian Fenton. Oh, sorry, at two, we have Brian Fenton. And at number one, we have Jack O'Shea. And I can oh. tell you, there is a chasm between Jack O'Shea has 5,500 votes, Brian Fenton has 4,200 votes, and Dara has 2,600 votes. So wow. Jack and Brian Fenton. Who's number four, Mikey? Anthony oh. Tohu, who I voted for, can I say, for transparency. And who's number five, so? Uh, Sean Kavanagh. Oh, yeah. Who will be He's nominated good. twice yeah, more. He did most of his football in the full forward line. He did, yeah. issue with a few there, no? Yeah. yeah, so did I. Okay, go on, your initial Paul thoughts McGrain. on that. Shoot. Paul McGrain should definitely be in the top ten. I'd have Wheelo further down the list. <laughs> no, I mean not further down. I mean the other way. Like, <laughs> All right. Even if I, even if I thought Wheelo should be number fifteen, you think I would say it here? I wouldn't. Have <laughs> I'd have Wheelo further up that list. Is what I mean. Like, um, no, I, I, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I just look at that and I see, yeah, Paul McGrain is obviously missing. Uh, I definitely have. Towhill, Towhill, Towhill for me was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Kevin Walsh yeah. is not in there. Yeah. Um, just like John Galvin, lads, wasn't even nominated, was he? John wasn't Galvin. Even... No. Don't John Galvin from Limerick, Gay Wheelo, was it? Yeah. Yeah. What happened super, here? Super player. Yeah. What about fair. Fergal Darty, Derry, Kieran? Yeah. Another good John Juan. Yeah. yeah. Even, if, even, even if you go back to some of the like guys, I some of the midfielders I played with Leinster going back the mid nineties, like Seamus O'Hanlon from Loud. He was an animal. That's he yeah. bait the head off you with his. You know, his <laughs> but like, if you look there now, we know. Right, my issue there. Right, number seven, Aidan O'Shea. I think Aidan O'Shea is a brilliant footballer. I have great time for him. I know he gets slack in some quarters, but I think he's outstanding. I don't think there's a better tactic in the game than him. Actually, and he's brilliant. He drives Mayo on. He's constantly there. He's constantly showing up for them, and he's constantly a big player for them. But he hasn't been for a midfielder, and it's like shame at full back. He hasn't consistently been at midfield, and it's nothing against him as a midfielder. I'm not saying, but I do think. Like for midfield, it is a specialised position, but I also think, and you know, you'd know it better than I would. I think the midfielders of 15, 20 years ago are different to the midfielders now. There aren't too many in the top ten. They're all traditional midfielders rather than Fenton is the only you better, really. Yeah, the, like the game, it's very, very hard to judge because the game changed so much. Do you know what I mean? It, particularly in terms of the kick out, and we went through an era where midfield the feeling wasn't usually important. It was all about possession. So, like. Like the likes of Aidan O'Shea is a box to box type player. He's not your, you know, he, he drops off into the defense when, like, particularly at the moment, the way he's playing that kind of role, where he's not a kind of traditional fielder of the ball. You don't see him lepping up and, yeah. you know, plucking balls out of the air. You know, Sean Cavanaugh is probably similar as well. Like, he's, he's more dangerous drifting into positions on that sidestep that would put you on your arse and over the bar. So there was different, different dynamic to guys where back probably up until, back up until 2000 or, or definitely 2000, 2002. Like midfielders was more about, you know, kicking the ball out, catching, kicking, you know, it was it was about feeling. It was it was dominating that platform in the middle of the park. So it was very, very it's, the game has changed. Like there's there's huge there's a great diversity of players in there. Like for me, these Tohill lads, I remember yeah, I was yeah. 14, 15 and I think we, yeah. I think we need to talk about Tohill. <laughs> he, he he was the first to come out of like that uh you know, he wasn't just your traditional mulliker in the midfield that, you know, that would catch the ball and lamp it into the forward line. He had everything. He was a silky footballer, left, right, took the freeze. He, like, I, I remember definitely me growing up 14, 15 year old looking at Tohill, I thought he was just top class, you know. Like, Unreal. I, 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 have, I, have, um, I, I have one quick story, and I'm Tomas. Obviously, you'd obviously be fairly familiar with Clash Decree 3. A lot of Kerry lads down through the years when they would have done their H-dips and that they would have actually, yeah, Morris and Gal, Paul Galvin would have actually, they, when they were doing their teaching H-dips, would have worked in the school. And <clears throat> that, it's where I went to school. It's a bit of a football nursery. I, I still, still think fourth and the Hogan Cup list. But we got to the Hogan Cup final 
in 1989, I was in first year in school. It was my first year in, um, in, in secondary school. And obviously everybody, all the students would be ferried onto the bus and you'd be taken off up uh, to wherever the match was. I, 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 to get the, the whole cup final that year, was in, it, was, it was in Port Leash. Um, wasn't playing in Cork Park for whatever reason. But um, it, we were, Chris Tree had were drawn against Mahara, uh, same paths of Mahara. And it was the first time that I'd heard the two words, Anthony Toll. And I'm not joking you, he beat us on his own that day. And we had a good team. Like, you had like so Colin Corkery and Joe Cavanagh, Stephen O'Brien, all these fellas. Like, like Chris Tree had a very, very good side. But Toll, literally, and like, just, I just thought he was, for me anyway, you know, and I was there in 93 when we were beaten. And, and without Anthony Toll, Derry win no All Ireland. Absolutely case closed. Not saying that he won it on his own, but just as Wheelow just said, the most complete and the most, the best Gaelic footballer I've ever seen, just in terms of his power, his size, his skill levels, his intelligence. He was extremely intelligent. Uh, kick the freeze, score goals, win kickouts, score points off his left, off his right. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal Gaelic footballer and a very good Sunday game pundit too. And I was kind of sad to see him go actually, in one sense. So it's it, like, I said I voted for him. My opinion doesn't count, except everybody thinks I'm picking the team. Uh, my opinion doesn't count, but I voted for him. Rory, you obviously voted for him. Oh, 100%. Aaron, yeah. you would vote for him. Tomas, would you vote for him? Um, geez, I don't know. You see, I... I the two O'Shea that he's voting for. <laughs> <laughs> he's voting for he his brother and Jay. He needs another O'Shea in there. <laughs> I need two O'Shea's in there, Rory. Yeah. Uh, well, well, there's, you, you can pick from three. There's Dara, Aidan and Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> We're picking a team of O'Shea's. No, I don't... I, 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 obviously, we know would have crossed paths with him. I came onto the scene um, around 98, 99, playing National League. And I wouldn't have crossed paths with him early on. I do remember when Dara came on the scene, first of all, with Kerry, who was around 94, he was playing the league. And I remember uh, Derry were obviously strong that time after winning the All-Ireland. And he'd be talking at home, you know, because we wouldn't go to all the matches. It wasn't like it is now where every match was huge. Even my old fella, I don't think, went up to a, an away league game. And Dara was just coming on. He was skinny and he was, he was light. He wasn't the player he was later on. And I remember him saying, geez, he was sore from the Derry fellas, but he said Tohal was an absolute animal. Like, And he's a gentleman. You see him coming across or whatever, but on the field, he must have been... Like, there was... That time, Kieran, there was huge midfielders. The physicality alone, because it wasn't like, no, where every ball was going kind of short and every ball was kind of in made possession. Yeah. It was flung out the middle every single it was just, time. Like yeah, the, keep, the keepers just put it down on a tee and they lamped it as far as they could, you know. So, <laughs> like, when, when, I, when I first started, like, a gust of wind would have taken me away, you know what I mean? If I turned sideways, yeah. now I'd, I'd block traffic, you know what I mean? So, I was <laughs> I up against guys like, you know, as I said, Seamus O'Hanlon, uh, Barney Marr from Leash. Uh, you know, you obviously had Kevin Walsh, you had Toehill. McDermott for me, John McDermott, lads, was like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. two All Ireland's as well. He was fiercely physical, and it was, it was, it was, it was all about physique, basically. And but I, I realized after a couple of years, the best way to play those lads was to try to get the ball because if you had more pace, then you get away from them. But if you got in a physical battle with them, 50 50, you didn't have a hope. So they, they were you, there was massive guys around. Like I, I played on Leinster teams where. Barney Marr was midfield with Seamus O'Hanlon and then like the, the half forward line was probably myself, Brian Steins and Niall Buckley. Like they were literally all midfielders that were mm. that were being kind of picked because it was just that kind of generation, I think, you know. But uh, McDermott lads was another one, I think, from me yeah. that who was who was he was a beast of a player as well. Tell us, Kieran, tell us a little bit about that. Kind of as you said, it's changed now. The game is it's more about running, it's more about precision, like from the from the kick out, like you know, you're running in space rather than dueling with someone. Tell us what it was like when you knew that, God, what, 30 times a game you were going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, the opposition's tallest, best jumper, best fielder, and you were going to battle him for the ball. Like, what yeah, it was, wasn't nice, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, like, what was the psychology of it? What were the dirty tricks? You had a lot of toes stood on, I would imagine, for a start. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It was all, it was all about positioning, but, like, as I said, 
definitely when I started off the era, there was a lot of big guys around, and I, I was only I was only a little whippet, being honest. Like I was tall and skinny, but it was very very. Uh, it, it was it was difficult because you you knew that you, you know you had to battle for that fifty fifty possession, and I probably came out the wrong side of it a lot of the time. I remember playing. When I played, to- I played Mark Towhill once in 2003 in a qualifier up in Clonus, and um, I was wearing my big, big white gloves at the time. And uh, <laughs> I remember them. I got. I think. I Humor, think I- yeah. No, no. I actually, I actually <laughs> I was with Adidas at the time, right? And Adidas gave me these big gloves. But they had, you know, the goalkeeper. They have the the, the kind of the, the little uh, protection panels behind each finger, yeah. right? They were big, monstrous things, you know. And in the first five minutes, Tola went up for a ball, and I came through just to punch it. But I broke his hand with the, with the things in the gloves, and he ended up gone. <laughs> after 10 minutes, he was delighted. He was gone. Um, but, uh, that, 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 was, that was probably... That, I only played against Tola, I think, uh, once in that championship match, because we only came across Derry really once. But played with him in international rules. He captained the international rules in 2001, so... You would have got to mark him in training every every, every week, you know. But he was see, just see, yeah. And a big thing as well from his point of view, I suppose, Wilo was the fact that like his best years were served behind the straight knockout format. He never really got the back door. Like I mean, the year that they won the All Ireland '93, I remember speaking to Anthony when he was when he was when he was on the Sunday game, and he he maintains that they were actually. A far better side in '94, but they got taken out by down. I think first, in the first round, round. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like the other guy was obviously the 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 other O'Shea. Like Dara was Dara was just class as well. In fairness, the the the, the killer about Dara was Dara was brilliant, and Tomas will know this. Uh, he was great at dropping off in midfield and picking up possession, and all the all the lads were given the ball. All the lads were the and yeah. he was great at talking to referees. <laughs> yeah, but he was a kind of, but he like not, <laughs> not only was he a great fielder, not only was a great fielder, but he was great at just dropping off. And all the, all these lads would give him the ball, and then they they'd make their runs. And so the amount of possession that he got on, like if I if I done that with Dublin, they'd look at me and they would have said, "I'm not giving it to that clown; he'll give it away." But like Darrell, Darrell was very good in possession. He, he just dropped into that half back, and he would always feed him the ball to Moss, and then you be you be gone down the wing. And then he'd pick a pick a long pass. He was a great kick passer as well. And he, that, that was that was yeah. horrible for Perkins because he all oh, he was on the ball nearly every every possession coming forward. He gave him the ball. Everyone. I through. think that that's what Kieran. The point Kieran made there with the kicking. The midfielders that time it was a way more kicking. Yes, you'd lose a lot of possession, and people would call it foolish. You're looking at the old games at the moment, and you're saying, Jesus Christ, we kicked an awful lot of ball away. Ball but that away, was yeah. the way it was done. Like it was you were you were told to move the ball. It wasn't tactically. You were told not to pass it around the middle, not to hold on to possession. The Dubs have mastered it, but uh, Kieran and Dara, uh, Tohal, Jesus Christ, they were all brilliant kickers. Like we were, Dara could kick, he was the best kicker on our team. So, and he was the best fetcher on our team. I remember in one All Ireland, um, um, he was our main man out around the middle. He had plenty of partners. Kirby was with him uh, a few times, but he had no solid partner consistently, right? So we played our man 2000 in the semi final. And I remember I was on one wing. I can't remember who I was picking up. But on the other wing, Cahal O'Rourke was on the other wing. And uh, they had it done perfectly. Like, we drew the game, the first game, and Dara was inside in the meeting. He says, we have an issue. Or, There's a serious issue. He said, I tried to start it out myself. I couldn't start it out. Uh, Cahal O'Rourke is coming across me. Just as I'm starting my run to go for the kick out, smack bang into me. And then, oh, sorry, oops. I have to run into you there. He said, it happened five or six times. So I was put on Cahill O'Rourke for the second game with the strict instruction, he does not block Dara, right? So I said, maybe this isn't true at all. Maybe it was all accidental. Cahill O'Rourke, like, you seem nice. Like, you were shaking my hand before no, the game. Was, that, 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 was, <laughs> that, was a def, that was a fine tactic. And after a couple of minutes, bang, smack. And Dara looked at me as if to say, what the hell? You're supposed to stop that shite like, you know? And I says, I'm not a bloody, I don't know what you call him in the American football. I says, I'm more of a footballer than that, Dara. I'm not just a squad or a thinker like. And <laughs> I'd, have that chat with him. I'd have that chat with him after. But uh, I, stopped him. I stopped him the next time and he went down. But it was all about the pitching. When we need, like, our go-to, same with Cheek, on, our go-to kick out was boom it down the middle to Dara. And he did it for, like, I suppose I'd be kind of biased in that I saw him constantly, like, but at that time, Jesus, he, he 
more than any. I think he was the most influential player on that Kerry team, uh, ahead of Gooch, ahead of Declan, um, ahead of Shamo. I think he was. If you didn't have Dara going to field, you were in trouble. End of story. He was the leader, because really, as well. Even though I know Kerry still implied the uh, they stand, they still do with uh, the captaincy role via the club county champions. But Dara was the leader, though, really, though, Tomas, uh, wasn't he? Jesus, Rory, like, there was no... Jesus Christ, if Declan O'Keefe or anybody uh, he took a shot kick out and based them, like, mm. I, I, like, they'd be absolutely killed. There was no shot kick outs. So it'd be like, I don't know, it'd be like going out with, with Tox and... Like, I don't know, it, it was, he was the, the main man there, so I'd, I'd be biased with that, like... Um, and Fenton then, like... It, with Fenton, it's actually scary, the fact that he's not... How many years has Fenton left? He's 20, 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. Christ, like, the way he minds himself, he's another six, seven years. Like, I mean, he's plenty of teams to be getting on. I'd, I'd have Dara on before him. Moss, <laughs> <laughs> Dara can't be on the team because he works for Sky. That's the rule. Did you not know that? Well, I'm, I, I'm still arguing for JJ. Is, can we get JJ Delaney or something? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring his hurl on me, he do a job around the middle. That was a joke, by the way. You are. Uh, <laughs> but like, it, you know, with Willie Joe Padden and Jack O'Shea, what did you say the vote was, Mike? Jack O. Rob Jack has 5,500 votes. Uh, uh, Brian Fenton has 4,200. Then Dara has 2,600. Like it's scary. Watch. I remember the lads saying stories about Jacko and how he was just an absolute athlete. Like he used to train in Dublin. Mikko's um, training sessions were supposed to be legendary, but Jacko was based in Dublin a lot, and he he trained with with um. Murder Hart Dick. Michal Murder Hart Dick. Yeah. yeah. But he, he was just like whip card. He was naturally, naturally fit. Like I think he won four. Am I right in saying that he won four footballers of the year? I think so, it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number, yeah. Yeah, like he was, he was unbelievable. Like there was a, a brilliant story. I love that Jacko, uh, Barra, and Jacko would be great for and they'd be chatting a lot or whatever. And Jacko apparently would wake up every morning. He was the most positive guy. If you ever meet him, like he's always, always in good form. And Jacko would wake up and he'd throw back the curtains in the morning of an All Ireland final, and uh, it might be pouring rain, and he'd say, "Just what I wanted." Oh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> next year, next year might be sunny. Just what I want. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Did he take part? Did he take part in? Do you remember superstars? Rory, yeah. Hold that. Hold that thought mm-hmm. because I'm going to try to share okay. my screen again. Fair enough. Fair enough. We fair have. Enough. We we lost a. Um, we certainly lost a. Uh, if Anthony Tohu could have played for Manchester United, judging by this footage that I have discovered of uh, Jack O'Shea from Superstars. Definitely, definitely could have played in the Premier League with these silky skills. It's uh, well, uh, bear with me there now, and we'll uh, fire this up. Uh, here's um, here's Jack O'Shea from the I think it's the 1980 competition. Can we see this? Probably doing, he's probably doing a few chin ups. Oh, we can, yeah, just play with it. The last to go on the yeah. penalties, then Jack O'Shea won this event in his heat. And if he were to repeat that performance here, I can tell you there'll be some cheer for the ever popular Jack O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the bandage knee, <laughs> Jacko's fellow county man Angus O'Donoghue has already gone as well in the penalties. Only managed one goal and in a poor time. Two up to Jack O'Shea then, and if he were to tuck this one away, then Jack O'Shea would win the penalty shooting again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> in the penalty shooting again. That's unreal. Yeah. There you go. Telling you. Soccerin. Yeah. Soccerin. You, it's not even allowed. Mm. The only thing... Uh, that's that programme, that Superstars is just legend. Oh, what a, what oh, a brilliant. What a programme in the 80s, to tell you. Yeah. Uh, Pat, Pat, Pat was also on it. I think Pat, Pat's plan was also on it. You remember with the sunburned arms? Oh, that's right. Yeah. He, yeah. He, <laughs> uh, he'd forgotten to put on the sunscreen with Jimmy McGee. But the what I'd be interested in the lads' views on this, right? I mean, look, Jack O'Shea broke my heart more often as a child growing up than anybody else. So, like, you know, look, there's amazing kudos and respect to him from anybody will say connected with Cork football. The only thing that I would say that if I was to pick my two, for instance, would be Tohill and Brian Fenton. And the reason being, and Jack O misses out, is he was surrounded by all about five or six of also the best players of all time 
Whereas I think Tohal, <clears throat> I'm not saying he had a dreadful supporting cast, but he certainly didn't have the depth of quality that Jacko would have had. Is that fair or unfair? You could, Rory, you could, you could, you could say the exact same about Fento as well. You know? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. He's, like, yeah. He, he's, he's unbeaten. You know, when he, like his record is just incredible when you think about it. But he's also been surrounded by surrounded by excellence, by the great, great, you know, greatest team. So it's it, the two of them it, were probably very, very hard, I suppose, probably for us because we're probably too young to judge Jacko. And there was only two games on TV when we were growing up, and we probably didn't see probably enough of him. But he definitely, for me, he was he stuck out from everybody else because he was such an athlete. He was a baller, if you know what I mean, where probably midfielders back in the 80s and 90s were more Mullickers maybe, Mullickers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably, where he was, a, he was just a serious athlete. And he, I'd say he could have played anywhere, you know? And uh, probably in any era, Wheelow, I'd say, like look, looking yeah. at the kind of physical condition that he kept himself in. Yeah, but I'd agree. Like Toehill, Toehill was def- wasn't surrounded probably by greatness, even though that 93 team was a great team. You know, they, he, didn't, he probably didn't have the same level of players around him. Yeah, I think it was the longevity of Jacko. Jacko was around for geez, Jacko played in the nineties as well, didn't he? And and he was started in seventy-five. Was his last game. Yeah, and he started yeah, he, in and seventy-five was his first year. Seventy-five. Well, no, seventy-eight was his first All Ireland. Seventy-five, he played minor, was it? Or seventy-six? Oh, minor. That's seventy-eight right. was his first senior. Yeah. But he, um, he had seven All Irelands. Like it was, but he was just phenomenal every year. Was, and I suppose it is when when. When he started, um, he played against Clare that day, didn't he? When they lost in 91. Yeah, was his last game. Was that? Yeah, that was yeah. the last game. Yeah, and he was inside full yeah. forward, I think. Like, he kept going to the very end. But, yeah, and, and the footage, I don't know, I think, it's, I think it's very hard. I'd love to see. Like, I was looking at the 2019 All-Ireland yesterday, and obviously, Cluxton changed the way the game was being played, really. With the draw the replay, Tomas. I, play, I was watching the draw, and, like... Jeez, I'd love to see, and I, it's nothing, look, I, I'm Brian Fenton's biggest fan, I think it's amazing what he does, I, I think he's just miles ahead, you can argue from every facet of the game in terms of just tackling, in terms of marking, in terms of his brain, the way he works and gets himself into position, his scoring, everything, but if he, ha- if he went through a full match where every ball was going out the middle, and every ball was being kicked long every single time. Would he be like we are comparing Jacko and Wheelow and Dara and Tohill, and a big part of it is the fetching. The fetching isn't a big part. The high catching isn't a big part. But was, would you, mid, we, was that not starting to come back though, Tomas? Was, was that yeah. Not start, yeah. I, I, I thought it was going back. It was beginning to creep back into it because a lot more teams, obviously, with the high press, was, you were seeing a lot more long kickouts. Kickouts um, being moved out to the twenty. Yeah, I think. I agree with you, Tomas. I, like, I, 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 fully, I fully agree that it's, it's, the, the game is so different. It's very, very hard to compare, guys. But I think we were at that point where it was beginning to come back and Fenton was going to, like, his, his feeling wasn't proven and stuff like that. Like, that's the, the scary thing about Fenton is he can still get better. He actually yeah. can still get better. He's, he's probably, probably not in his prime, which is actually scary. Like, like, look, even the league this year, he started to actually get forward now and He's, he's kicking more scores and every year he's incrementally adding something to his game. So The, the, the first time I came across him, actually, Wheelow, and you might remember this, you were managing Rohini at the time. It was a game yeah. played inside an Inish Fales. You know, Inish Fales there right. in... Yeah. And we were, you were playing Fingal Ravens. Rohini were playing Fingal Ravens. And um, our, our club, Pats, that a bit, we were playing in the game afterwards. And I remember going and watching it. And... I actually remember, I met you in the car park afterwards. This now was long before he was playing with Dublin. And I said to you about him, I said, who's your man? Because you were playing him in full forward at that time, was that correct? Yeah, he, he was coming back from an injury, the knee injury. He was out for a full year. And uh, he was only coming back, so he hadn't much done. And we, we were like, it was like, we had bonus getting him back, but we we had nothing up front. So I, I stuck him in full forward. And he played well that night, you know? He played well. But you could yeah. see he was a class above. He just yeah. had that inter-county style that, you know, you know the way, like, lads are, he just glides across the ground. And you can Kieran, see this. That's, that's, that's Kieran, why, why was the, because actually was one of my colleagues, Declan Welly, wrote a very good piece there last year. It was about kind of how himself, Jack McCaffrey and Kieran Kilkenny came up together playing for the kind of the, the North Dublin kind of schools ages and how they kind of knew each other very well from a young age. Was it that injury that kind of stopped him progressing at the same pace as the two lads? Like the fact, you know, he wasn't really, didn't feature it under 21 so much and was a, a year or two later coming into the senior setup than the other lads. Was it injury or was it 
you no. know, that they weren't looking, Jim Gavin wasn't looking for midfielders at the time. What kind of explain that kind of slight pause? But yeah, now he, he, came, came, yeah, he, player. he came up because I, I texted him when Desi got the job. I sent him a text. I says, I says, you're f- because <laughs> Desi didn't pick you for the minors. I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he uh, he came up with that development squad that Desi had, and he, he he like he was always a great talented footballer, but he wasn't actually that tall. Lads, he he took a huge sport when he was 17, 18, 19. So uh, he he didn't get picked. He didn't get selected on that minor team that Kenny and McCaffrey was on. Uh, Desi Farrell looked after them all the way up under 13. Uh, so he he didn't get picked, and then he got injured. When he uh, after minor about nineteen twenty got injured and uh, he was he he was I remember him being coming down to train and he was very despondent he was he was actually very close he was he was losing faith with the game because he had gone through such a array of injuries and he was talking about going on a work placement down to Cork and he was going to maybe train with a team down in Cork so that would have been a disaster that would have been his career over uh, if he had gone down there obviously to Rory's <laughs> <crowd. laughs> uh, career. <laughs> We persuaded him really? to stay, and then uh, it was actually Dave Billings, the late Dave Billings, really that saw something in him. Uh, Dave, Dave goes to every club match in Dublin, like no matter St Anne's Park, wherever it is, he crop up with the dog or on his bike or whatever. And uh, Dave was a great man for picking an eye for talent. And he he Bento was going to UCD, and he got him involved in the Freshers team, and then all of a sudden he was on the Sigerson team, and then he was in left half forward, and he just grew. And as once his confidence grew, and then he grew as well, he shot up, lads. It was frightening. Uh, I remember looking down on him, and now, like, you, you know, you meet him, you're looking up at him. And so he was just a late developer, Mikey, being honest with you. He, he, just, he just didn't get selected for the minor team. It was nothing to do with injury. Yeah. It's interesting. Tomas, you, you, would you think that would feed into, the, like, maybe he wasn't a naturally tall man to begin with, so he had to develop skills that maybe weren't kind of naturally, you know, weren't always associated with a traditional midfielder. So now you have got someone who's physically a traditional midfielder but also has kind of the skills of somebody who you know may have had to play full forward or may have been considering playing around the half forwards or the half backs that might kind of contribute to his all-around game I suppose. Yeah he is look he's geez, he's the complete footballer Mikey he's uh, I think he's a great student of the game I think he um, you know it's very hard to kind of read the lines with the dubs and hard to kind of get an insight into what they do and how they train and what they weigh they kind of think about the game but I did a, a I did a Q&A with Kieran Kilkenny and you know it's not that you're looking for them to slip or anything but he just mentioned that after training sessions himself and Fenton would go off and this is after training sessions and they'd meet up and they'd have conversations and they'd, they'd basically dissect each other's training performance the night before in terms of whatever trial game or whatever they had and ways of actually so you can imagine like after a match a manager might sit you down these fellas go through it I'd say every single session I, and I remember another night we were at a thing and Dara did a, uh, was up on stage I remember Fenton whatever way I glanced across Fenton was sitting in front of the stage and he wasn't there like if you're inside in a place and you don't want to be there you just get out of there it's a pain in the arse this guy was sitting up like a young kid listening to Dara he, he, he just strikes me as a, the humility out of him like he yeah. constantly wants to get better he constantly and if as, as we all reckon that uh, yeah, and I would agree. Yeah, the, the the squeeze up will generate more kickouts, and it'll be easier to push up on goalies. And I think he will. He'll have no issue with it. But it's not natural. It hasn't been the natural in the last ten years. But he is by far the best midfielder in the country. Like I, I actually, the reason I got half, uh, so actually not half, fully pissed off with the Aussie rules stuff was I think that Kerry had a uh, not a replica Mark, because Mark you can't. You can't Mark O'Connor was as close. There's a clip on YouTube of Mark O'Connor uh, in his minor days in Crow Park. I think he played four, four finals in Crow Park um, where, with the schools and the minors, and he was man of the match in three of them. And if you watch it and you say, that's Brian Finton, he's the exact same, the exact same, where he gets around the field, he's at the end of scores, he's tackling, he's in great positional sense. Um, Fenton is by far the, the He never looks like he, he always looks like it's so easy to him, you know. Yeah. Where you, he looks like he's gliding like yeah, when you're out there yourself, you'd be calfing like you'd be in a heat. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Trying to get from one, one place to the other. Where he just looks like he's just at that one mode all the time and he's just moving, moving and, it's and lately like never under pressure. You know, I, lately you talk about you talk about Dara reffing games. 
he's beginning to ref games as well now as I can see him getting involved and he gets close up and up to the referee and he is a kind of a guy if there's a skirmish going on he doesn't go in looking for trouble but by God there will be no trouble like he will get in there I, I think he's there's no he doesn't start shy he doesn't kind of get involved for the sake of getting involved but you won't mess around with him either like and that's the way it should be you know I think it's yeah, well, as you say, he's a nice fella. So referees, he's the kind of guy a referee will listen to because he's he, 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 he seems like a nice fella. One of, the, one of the tips of the game, lads, get to know the referees. Oh yeah, yeah. excuse me. Yourself sir. and um, yourself and Dara Wheelo used to have great crack with Pat McAninny back in the day. I'd say, <laughs> even during matches like big championship matches. We did. Yeah. Pat, Pat, Pat still gave it. Pat still gave us feck all. I don't know what we were doing wrong anyway. <laughs> I remember. No, we know. We know. I tell you what you. I tell you what you were doing wrong. You weren't inviting him down for uh, dinner dues down to Killarney yeah. and I'm, <laughs> I'm putting him up, putting him up in the Glen Eagles on, on a weekend. Well, the Glen always... Eagle. It wouldn't be the Glen Eagle. It'd be the Europe. Put him up in the Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a time now. So that was well, That's one of the advantages when you have a midfield. If you're a midfielder, because you you're always. Your first, the referee standing with the ball in the middle of the park. So you always have that opportunity to go up early, 10, 15 seconds early, shake his hand, have a chat with him, ask him how life is, how are the kids, the whole lot. And that just little imprint in his head. <laughs> All right. The midfielders have an advantage in that which regard. Which referees were most receptive to that, Karen? Which ones would, which ones would you know, have a chat and you'd soften them up and which ones would see through you straight away? Uh, uh, well, Pat, well, Pat was fair. Pat McAnini would, would, would always, always chat away to you. Paddy Russell chat away to you, I suppose. Uh, John Bannon. Uh, Brian Crow, uh, John actually. Bannon. You used John to have Bannon. a good, good crack with him. But then you had the likes of Marty Duffy who wouldn't say anything to you. Do you know what I mean? He just snarled at you. We won't, talk, we won't talk about Marty Duffy. <laughs> 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 we almost have to know after that. We won't talk about Marty Duffy. No, I don't I think you, Tomas Dr. Would, I don't think I don't think Tomas would want me to start going on about Marty Duffy here anyway. There's, a, sure. there's a lot of reps I wouldn't want you to go on about. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you couldn't be a midfielder, Tomas. Dr. Khan used to tell me, you think we were the only fellas influencing Rory the Cork boys were really able to do it as well. Khan used oh, yeah. to say he used to have an old trick where he'd run in and Khan would be respected by everybody. You know, so if Khan said something, Khan wouldn't be trying to mess around or whatever but he used to always go in right and he'd be treating it for and the ref would be standing over and if it was Marty Duffery or whoever it was he'd say he's Marty don't look at the match tonight you're having a holer and that's all he'd say <laughs> <laughs> and he'd turn around and he'd run off and he'd say he's hope they influence something there now <laughs> but you know what they probably you Khan probably had to play the good cop because if he was running in and you had Billy on the sideline Ah, oh. you had plenty of bad guys. You had plenty yeah, of bad guys going on. Uh, lads, we'll finish up now in a minute. So I think we always kind of finish to talk about the present day. Um, I, I, it's clear you both have Brian Fenton in the centre of the field. Uh, Wheelo, who'd be partnering him now for, if you were to pick a uh, current well, midfielder? I didn't. I didn't pick my two yet. No, Mikey. <laughs> no, you've been mulling it over and giving you. A I don't want to rush you. I don't want to rush you. It's come back to me. Come back to me now in a couple of minutes when you're finished. So you're talking, Mikey, like the the basic current day. Yeah, yeah. Who'd yeah. be your current day with Brian Fenton? Who would you have with him? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd say. Listen, it's probably between Aidan O'Shea. Uh, I'd say in terms of what he gives Mayo, and you know he is that kind of box to box player. Uh, David Moran, obviously, when 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 David Moran is on his blow, he's he's he he can control the game. He's he, he's top class. Uh, they're probably the two that I would that would would be that if you were picking a current kind of team for a, for a, for an, an Irish Gaelic team as such, I, pro probably Aidan O'Shea and Fenton. I think they'd complement each other okay. quite well. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't have much problems with that. Um, I think David Moore, yeah, David Moore, this like for Kerry going well, and it's a it's it's a serious issue for Kerry going forward because when David Moore leaves, uh, whenever it is, and there was talk this year, but I'd say I'd say you might get a year or two out of him. But when he leaves, there's no natural successor. There's a young lad coming with the under twenties, uh, but yeah, Aidan O'Shea, I think I, I'd have I'd be a big fan of Aidan O'Shea's. I think three of them, Fenton is is ahead of all of them. I think. Um, David and, and Aiden, I suppose. I don't think David and Aiden are surrounded by the players that, well, that uh, Fenton is surrounded you, you, by you, you as a unit. Have... And I, I, you fellas could mm -hmm. argue, Jesus, the Mayo defence, yeah. And 
I, I'm talking the whole package. I'm talking the goalie. I'm talking your defence. I'm talking your midfield because midfielders rely on all of them. And I think Fenton has the best package by all. And okay, Tomas. Fenton by far. Put us out of our misery then. Who, who, what's your midfield of Sunday game here then from 79 to current day according to the... According to the I see we are laughing already. Um, I, look, I, I, get, I get the argument with Tohal and... Jacko's in. Jacko, uh, for me, is, and I've seen enough footage of it and I've heard enough, like, he's just, he is an awe about him around Kerry because I think the fact that he didn't live in Kerry as well, when people actually from Kerry, you'd see Kerry footballers walking around the place. Jacko was based in League Slip and when Jacko used to come home and Jacko would be walking around the place, he'd walk with a strut. You ever see him walk? He still walks yeah. with the same <laughs> strut. Um, but he, he, I think Jacko would definitely be there. I look... I know I'd be in fucking trouble, and there's too many O'Shea's <laughs> on the team. I go, I go with Dara. I go with Dara because, hey. of, of, like, uh, I I know. Look, Fenton. I I I think you had that's five O'Shea's. That's five O'Shea's on the team now. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> I know this is probably. I know this is probably my last time being invited onto the show now. For this. <laughs> and, uh, I'll probably go down. But I, I think if you look at it over the years from he came in at 97, he had a big impact in the final yeah. in 97. I know it's your brother and you hate talking about it, but for me, and I suppose I am biased because geez, he won games for Kerry. And I said it before, he won big games for Kerry when, um, and he was always there. He was the boss man around the pitch. He caused trouble when it, he'd start a row when it was needed. He, he would do, and look, I, I obviously, if I if, if I was playing with with, uh, I'd probably bias. There's nothing between himself, Fenton, Tohill. Uh, I'd have Guido. Like Dermot Early was down at six, I think, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, I'd have. I'd change up that list. I'd love to pick um, um, Whittle down a team myself and have the the three selections I'd have for it. But look, I'm going with the two O'Shea. Sorry. Can you, you find just, another twelve yeah. O'Shea's to fill out that team entirely now? If you were to pick an entire fifteen. Well, I already have Shawnee. Shawnee Shea is up there already. Um, <laughs> no, you get Aiden in there in the full forward line, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just one question to the lads, actually, before we wrap up there, Mikey, if you don't mind. That's just, uh, just, uh, just curious. You, uh, Tomas mentioned David Morn, and I don't know if the lads were listening to the podcast yesterday, but Brendan Cummins was making the point that for the older players, like there would have been a fear when this crisis hit that it might spell the end of a lot of intercounty careers. But Brendan actually took a very different slant on it. And I'd be interested in the lads' views, like considering Tomas just mentioned David Morn and his age profile, that this could potentially be a little bit of a sort of an oasis for the body and that lads will have a huge amount of time now to get proper rest and recuperation to maybe have another go once this thing passes, would you kind of uh, subscribe to that view? Or do you think that, look, this could spell the end of Cluxton and whoever else, you know? Well, I don't think it will end, spell the end of Cluxton, Rory, but I'd, kind of, I'd agree with Brendan to a certain degree. It depends, I suppose, on their self-discipline and it depends on their environment at home. It depends what's going on in their lives, where they are at. But definitely in terms, like, geez, I remember my, the last year I played, 2009, right. Well, I, Pat, Pat Gilroy played me right throughout the league. I and mean, the time I got to the summer, I was spent, I was gone. And the previous years to that, I didn't play league. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, the likes of Tomas and myself, the latter part of a career certainly weren't put out in February, you know, and you were kind of rested and recuperated and you were a lot fresher come the summer. So there is logic in that where the guys that might be under pressure, to like the league is so bloody competitive now, lads, that they have to, like the best teams are put out there uh, like it's it's phenomenal the competition in the leagues and there's huge pressure on the lads to deliver at a consistent level right throughout the league. Like back in our day, you know, geez, you'd waddle back in February with a big fat arse and you'd be gasping going around the first weekend. But that doesn't that kind of doesn't happen anymore. So it, it, yeah, there's probably logic that if they're self disciplined and they and arrests the body that they and if they get an opportunity and get a run at it to come back, some older lads could come back with a with, with a bit of a blast. All right, yeah, yeah. Mm. I wouldn't disagree with that. Rory, I think like Jesus, who would retire now? Like you couldn't. Oh, I'm retiring after what? After the like, there's nothing like. I think it, I find it very hard if you were on your last legs and yeah, you'd say, "Geez, I plan to retire this year," but Christ, I'm not going now. So how can I go now? No game play. Retire after mm. what? Walk away after what? You know, and it's not that fellas have it planned out, but you'd like to walk out um, when you feel like you're walking out of some battle or you've lost in an All Ireland semi final or a Munster final or a Leinster final or whatever. You don't want to go. 
Like it's 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 something that we're not used to or anything. The only thing I worry about is in terms of freshness. Like the fear that that you don't know when this is going to kick on or when it's going to start or whatever. That yeah. I, I've no doubt that Inter County Fitters are training like dogs right now. They're training, and it's a lot harder to train. Quilo, you know this. It's a lot harder. You 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 were with a group and you're told to go for a five kilometer run with a group. You do it because Jesus, if you don't, you look like an absolute. Uh, if you don't stick with that group, whereas on your own, it's it's the hardest. I've stopped running. I, I just go for walks anymore. I can't I, I, run I, on my own, like, and I don't think like I think teams are training very very hard, and they don't know when they're going to get back and and think. I think that's hard on players right now because realistically, lads, you're you're not going to yeah. see. I, I know I suspect, you're going to see football this year. I suspect some managers at the moment are trying to keep their players on a leash. That they don't overdo it in this period. They don't. They just should be. They're trying to hold them back, and they're probably trying to control what they're doing, rather because they've so much time in their hands that they're probably thinking, "Yeah, I can get an edge, or I can get an inch or inch or two better," and they push themselves too hard. And it's a, it's a, it's a case of trying to hold them back, hold them back, keep them tip, tipping over because there's no, there's nothing on the horizon at the moment. Yeah. There's lads the there who have been going non-stop since they're 15, 16 on, you know, between development squads and club teams. They've been on, they've been torn between three or four teams for 10 years or more. Someone should tell them how beneficial this rest could be. As someone was saying, uh, mentioned yesterday, like the rugby players, you hear them talk about it almost uh, sometimes an injury can be the best thing that happens to them because it means they get to rest and recuperate for eight, nine months and they can add a couple of years onto their careers. This doesn't even involve an injury. This can just actually be a real chance for a guy in his late twenties or early thirties who has an awful lot of miles on the clock. Say David Moran to like yeah. a reset. I think Mikey, like that's that's definitely like you take this current situation we're in. If you're not in that current situation, Brian Fenton's getting up and he's 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 training. I would say, and, and you, I'm talking to the rugby lads, the Munster rugby lads down there. The GA for has trained just equally as hard, put in the same amount of time, are as equally as fit. Uh, died every sort of a thing but then Brian Clinton's getting up for a day's work and it is rest is the key thing so I suppose I don't know a lot of them are working from home but their routine has changed I would imagine that inter-county teams uh, ensure whatever else is that their their routine is solid and once their routine is solid like I think you know you uh, Kingston came out with the car colours a couple of times and he, he wanted answers he wanted to know when are they back can you give us a date? Can you give us some idea? And the only reason they want that is they don't want a definitive decision. They want to be able to plan their training for what is actually required. So what's mm. the point in doing heavy stuff now when you need to be doing that stuff maybe three or four weeks before an actual match? And there isn't going to be a match in the next three or four weeks, so why do the heavy stuff? Like? Yeah, yeah. well, it's, there's still so much nobody knows, and we'll find out a little later today how much longer we're all going to be stuck in our houses for, but it looks like a couple of weeks, and I would say optimistic even to get some club action this year I'd say so there's a lot there's a lot that we don't know but what we do know is that you can still vote for the all-star midfield team of the we know who's your two uh oh my two I suppose in the interest of uh definitely going with <laughs> and in the interest of balance I think I'll have to go with James McCarthy I'm only joking <laughs> <laughs> don't you start <laughs> <laughs> no he's not even nominated no uh yeah, it's actually very tough, being honest. Uh, I'm torn between, and uh, it's probably having more, I suppose, upfront knowledge of Fenton maybe and uh, Towhill that they're the two I'm going for and leaving Jacko out, which is probably harsh because I probably, I probably not being in his generation, he probably was a better footballer than I'll ever understand. But now I'm going with Fenton and Towhill based on my experience, yeah. Okay, for transparency, Rory, who are you going for? Yeah, the same, the same for me. And it's and as I said, it was just in terms of the point I made earlier. It's not because I like. I mean, Jack O'Shea is a giant to the game, and he, you know, he's a Hall of Famer and all of that. It's just I feel uh, that that I think the support cast that Jacko had was incredible, absolutely mm-hmm. incredible, off the charts, even more impressive. I think in some ways than what. Um, what Dublin currently have, despite the, the, the Dublin success, I just think, and um, and Tohill, I mean, are just a machine. So yeah. Tohill and Jacko for me. And in the modern game, I just want to give one shout to Niall Kearns and Monaghan, who I think is an outstanding midfielder as well. So, yeah. Fair play. All right, well, remember, you can still vote on the RT website and the NewsNow app. Please do vote. And when you vote, remember that you voted, and we haven't picked the team. It's been picked by the public. 
although you football crowd are a lot more relaxed than the hurling crowd. Uh, <laughs> justice for JJ. Uh, that's, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Sunday Sports back on Sunday. Lots of good stuff in there. I know uh, plenty of GA. And um, just like to say thank you to the lads. And um, please do subscribe or have a look at us on YouTube. And we will chat to you again next week when we will continue our look at these teams. So thanks very much, guys, and good Great stuff. Cheers, lads. Cheers, lads. Thank Cheers. you. Good luck. Good luck. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar.